Welcome to New Hunter Church of Christ this morning. This is Michael DeSilvis. Top it off to all you soldiers of the Christian Army. Hope everything's going good for you. We're getting ready to start here in a few minutes. So enjoy the music here, and we will get underway here shortly. Remember, our sermon this morning will be talking about blessings from God as well as responsibilities that come along with it as being a Christian. And that's what we're going to talk about here this morning here in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Love you. Okay, good morning everybody. This is New Hunter Church of Christ. Uh, we're doing 20 sermons of truth and reasoning. Uh, it's a series we've been doing and today we'll be talking about from a buddy of mine is a series of it's on blessings and responsibilities. You know when you become a Christian you get blessings from the Lord that are promised to you as well as responsibilities. Before we start let's start and start before let's start with prayer first. Dear Lord thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you that we're able to come out and worship in a place like this, you know, online, where we can worship in person and come and be a part of a family that has eternal uh, potential as well as providential things that because we belong as being a part of your uh, lineage, uh, uh line of, uh, of uh, you know, heiress to your throne. And how we have a part, a big stake in that. And when we become believers, whether we're Greek, whether we're Jew, whether we're Gentile, whether we're converted Muslims, all people are welcome to the same uh, promise as long as they follow what the Lord does teach and command for us to do in His Word. And as we put that in our lives and duplicate it and show it as an example, you know, in every way and by the way we, by the way we live our lives too, even. You know, also is is exemplary of that fact. It's not just how we live, but it's how we demonstrate that to other people in our communities, in our homes, with our hospitality, how we are as a character, how we are as a person, transcends through all those elements of humanity. And God judges us on all those merits, just like he'll judge you as well as I. We'll all be judged on that one day in the sight of him. It's a promise. It's not a threat. It's a promise. But anyway, I want to ask you something here. I want to give you something to think about this morning. Being a member of a physical family congregational church brings blessings, but it also requires certain responsibilities that come along with it too as well. Now let's look at some things. Let's focus on the blessings of being a part of a physical church family. That means you go to a physical church. You know, I always say that this is a great church. See the steeple? And you open up and you see all the people. But the thing is, you see what I'm trying to say is, we all need to physically be at a church. But if you don't feel good, you're not feeling well, you can listen to us. That's fine. But you need to go to church. It's so important. So when you feel better, you need to find an assembly, a church of Christ that's near you, and uh, just start going. If you haven't been going, you listen to our podcast too. You can even give to us if you like. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring that in here before we get into the sermon even more. Uh, because a lot of people tend to turn it off before we even get to this. Uh, you know, we need your support. You know, a church cannot grow on itself. A, a church cannot grow without people's effort, by putting effort into it, and by people putting their time in it. And how you do this through tithing of gifts and love offerings, and how you do it so that we can grow. You know, we need $150,000. That's a lot of G's, I know. But we need it to rent a building and to fill a building so that we can have a lot of you come here to worship with us at New Hunter Church of Christ, a new church in Mechanicsville. It's a church of Christ that's on fire for the Lord Jesus. And that's what we want, people that are ambassadors for God, soldiers and warriors for God, where they're wearing their Christian armor. They will talk about here in a few minutes in the sermon. But the thing is, that's what it's all about, folks. So we need you to come, and we need you to be a part of us and to help us by doing that, by donating things, equipment, materials, chairs, sound equipment, Make sure it works. It's new. Make sure there's no problems with it. You know, if you could donate money and we can just buy the stuff out, that'd be perfect. Better. Because I know what to get because I work with music and I'm a musician myself too. I still do that. Still singing, by the way. 
But anyway, it's not about me. It's about the Lord. So this morning we're going to be talking about this about responsibilities and blessings that come along with being a part of a physical church family. But just give to us if you can help us. Our address is 7110 New Hunter Road, apartment 423, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23111. And, of course, if you want to call in with a debit card, do a debit card transaction, we can take that over the phone at 804-789-9373. It's 804-789-9373. Or you can give a debit card here when you attend here at our church in person. And we'll do it here uh, after church. We don't usually process cards during offering, but we'll take your offering after church if you're doing it by way of credit card. But we do it by debit. Not credit, but debit. All right, so anyway, let's get into here. So being a member of a church at a physical, that is a physical Christian family where you go to a physical building like we talked about brings blessings, but it also requires certain responsibilities that come along with it too. Blessings, what are the benefits of belonging to a physical family of Christ and being going to a church? Uh, well, number one, you have the love and care of your parents and their approval, of course, and even God's approval, because that's the mainly one you want to seek, not your parents. Because uh, some parents... You may not have their approval if they don't go to church, you know. But if they do, then you have their approval, so that's a blessing. It says the daily necessities of life, which are like you're, they're provided for through the caring needs of others. Remember I was saying it's so important to help us so we can grow? That's so important. It says protection from all dangers and disease, you know. Now that's that's a guarantee in most, pl- in some, in most cases, but some people get diseases, and some people do get dangers, even though they do these things. And it's not because they're not doing the right thing, you know. But sometimes that happens. But God still does restore people, even when they come out of a danger or a disease. The disease can go into remission, which means it can stop or be killed dead in its tracks, because God does that. That's a blessing. And that does happen a lot of times in church, too, when you attend church and when you go. Plus, you benefit out of their opportunities and avenues that could open up to you that wouldn't be opened up to you by not going to a church like work opportunities, you know, group incentives, uh, making new friends. You know, there's other opportunities that aren't even listed here that are benefits that are also blessings by attending a real church, a physical church building on Sunday morning. Uh, the blessing also, the fourth point, a blessing of a good name. It's, that is important. Let's look at the responsibilities to a physical family when you go to a church. See, we talked about the blessings, now we're going to talk about the responsibilities. All right, to a physical church. It says, obey your parents. That's Ephesians 6, 1, Colossians 3, 20, and Luke 1, I mean 2, 51. So if you want to look that up, you can do that later on, but I can't, I'm going to paraphrase these things. I'm going to give you the summary of what they mean, because that's what I do, because I don't have time to read each verse, because we got a lot of stuff to cover here in a little bit of time. It says, uh, number two, it says, provide for your own. What that means is support yourself. Don't try to have other people support you or have the government support you. Try to get off of that if you can. Because that's what the government, that's what God wants you to do. The government wants you to stay on it so you can depend on it. But God wants you to get off of the check. Get off of these things and let other people take care of you if you're not willing, if you're not able to do it yourself or you to take care of yourself. That's what God teaches in His Word. You know, that means provide for your own. It says repay all your loans and bills. You know, don't don't borrow money and don't pay people back. No, Christian is supposed to repay your parents and repay your loans and bills. That's found in. I wanted to say take care of your own. That's First Timothy five eight, and then we have for the repay your parents back by doing good deeds and all that, and as well as paying debts back, like for school loans and things. That's First Timothy five four. You want to look that up. All right, bring children up in training and also in admiration and obedience of the Lord. That's in Ephesians 6, 4. And it's and also a Christian. Let's look at this. A Christian is a part of God's family. That's 1 Timothy 15, Galatians 3, 26 through 7. That's 27. Make sure you understand that. And then also being a child of God and, a, and being joint heir or co-heirs, to Jesus Christ is, brings great blessings. And also being a child of God also carries with it certain responsibilities as well as we talked about earlier. So this sermon will will consider both blessings and responsibilities of being a child or Christian or a child of God. So let's look at that this morning. Say the blessings, what happens? 
having God as one's fa- as one or your father, you can say as one's father or your father, um, you know, personalize it. When Jesus taught his very disciples to pray, he had them address the prayer to one father. That's found in Matthew 6, 9. See, that's important because other religions will say you need to address it to three fathers or three gods and all that. No. Jesus only said to address it to one to our father, meaning one father. And only one father. That's what the Bible says. We pray to one father. We don't pray to a militia or a preacher or a priest. We pray to one father. That's our father in heaven. Matthew 6, 9 is where that's found. 1 John 3, verses 1 through 2 also states that Christians are children of God. And this is what happens. God, God, you know, that's what that tells us. That we are children, literally of God, when we're baptized believers. It can't be that until we're baptized, though, not before. God is Father to those who are as follows. Now listen. Father. Are there, God is Father to those who are as follows. Separate from this world. That's found in 1 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18, and 1 John 2, 15 through 17, and James 4, 4. I know that's not a musical term. And led by the Holy Spirit, that's Romans 8, 14. Of course, it is a musical term, but not in this case. Um, just make sure you have 120 tempo off of that. But just know, it's really seriously, it's James, it's Rome, it's, um, it is, like I said, it's James 4, 4. But anyway, wearing the great name, or the greatest name in the world that you could ever wear, being a part of the family of Christ, all right, is the name of Christ. That's Philippians 2, verses 9 through 10. And then also his disciples were to wear the full name of Christ. You know, that's what it says, to wear the full name and armor of Christ. It's found in Acts eleven twenty six, wearing the name of Jesus Christ. All right, now it speaks of their very salvation in Acts four twelve. It also tells that they belong to him. In 1 Corinthians 6.20, 1 Peter 1.17-19, through 19, and it also says one must be baptized. You hear that? Baptized. I want to make sure we got that clear. In his name, I mean Jesus' name, no other name but Jesus. Not in no baby, not no, not no catechism, not none of that. No, in Jesus' name, it's his name, in order to rightfully wear his name that's found in first corinthians 1 verses 10 through 14. now enjoying the protection of god or enjoy yes yeah, what it says enjoying the protection of god the child of god does not have to fear others i mean you don't have to fear people because god is pow- all powerful and will will protect you as his promise it's found in first peter 3 13 through 14. then we also can look here where it says, even if a child of God has to suffer, he or she is still blessed. That's Matthew 5, verses 10 through 12. Then it also tells us, Jesus gives us all assurance of the Father's watchful protection over us. That's found in Matthew 10, verses 27 through 31. Now, it's like Bible Bowl. I know, we're moving, aren't we? It is. It kind of reminds me of Bible Bowl when I was at church. All right, but it really is. It says, receiving the proper spiritual uh, provisions. All right, the child of God receives water unto eternal life. That's John four ten through fourteen, but it's also found in Acts two thirty eight, where it talks about that promise of it. Well, it's actually actually two thirty nine. Correction. It talks about the hope of eternal life. That's it right there. But it also says it right there in John four ten through fourteen. And it says the bread of life that's found in John 6, 51 and Acts 20, verse 32. It says enjoying the very promises of God. This is what happens as a result. It says those of the faith who belong to God have been given great and precious promises found in 2 Peter 1, verses 1 through 4. And we see these promises are sure, meaning they're certain, they're a guarantee from God. They have a seal on it. That's 2 Peter 3, verse 9. Then we also see these promises also include the following. It says, A, omission or erase, remission, remission or forgiveness of all past sins in Acts 2.38. That's where we see that. Remember when the jailer said this back up in Acts 2.37. The jailer said to Paul, what must we do in order to be saved? And 
What did Paul say? He said, Acts 2.38, he said, I'll walk you right through it. I'll, read it. I'll just tell you from word for word because I know it from memory. He said, rise and be baptized each and every one of you for remission of your sins. That's exactly what he says. So then we want to go here. It says, listen to this. It says this. It says, access through prayer. We have that. See? So that's 1 John 2, verses 1 through 2. And then we have eternal life. That's Titus. That's where it's found. You know, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. Now let's look at the responsibilities that a Christian has. We're going to talk about that. All right. It says respecting the full authority of God. You know, that's what we got to do. We got to respect that. It says consider the commandment that God gave to his children of Israel under the old law, meaning the Old Testament in Exodus 20, verses 3 through 4. You know, that is what he told us to honor thy father. It says similar principles and commands to honor thy the authority of God are also given today to our children today, not just in Israel, but all around the world. It says, worship and also serve your living God alone, meaning no other gods, no other idols, no other statues, no other, no other nothing, just God. That's found in Matthew 4.10. It also says, since Jesus Christ has all authority on heaven and in earth, it tells us in Matthew 28, verse 18, it also says that all should be done in his very name. In Colossians 3, 17, also tells us in defending his cause, or defending the cause of God. Let's look at that. It says, one, the Christian must be, must be set for the defense, the very defense of the gospel. That's found in Philippians 1, 17. It's also, it also says the child of God must put on the whole armor, not part of it, but the whole armor of God. That's Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17. And it also says Christ's disciple must not be ashamed of the word or the gospel. That's found in Romans 1, 16. And it also says the Christian must be willing to wage warfare if necessary to protect it. That's 2 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 6. It says... The learning of the let's learn about the will of God. Let's look at that. We've got four things here. We're almost done here, folks. It says God's child must put forth a diligent effort to be approved before God. And that's found in 1 Timothy 2 15. It's chapter 2, verse 15. One must be must be also filling himself or herself with the very word of God. Because you can't really tap into it unless you read it, right? That's right. You got to be connected, right? You got to be rock solid. You got to be grounded with the Word of God. That's Colossians three sixteen. It says one must be longing for spiritual nourishment, meaning you're not getting, you're not eating all those refreshments at church. You're eating the Word of God. You want to learn more and more that you want more and more. You're longing for it. You want to learn more as much as you can. First Peter two verses one through two, where that's found. One must also be hungering, like we were talking about, and thirsting for his righteousness. That's, a, that's a found in the Beatitudes, Matthew 5 and verse 6. That's where that comes from. Um, and also obeying the very commandments of God. That's very important. Okay, Consider the very teachings of, G, of 1 John 5, verses 1 through 3. Look at that. It says, keeping with God's commandments expresses the following. One's love for God and Jesus Christ in John 14, 15. It also says, one faith in the word and his promises of God that's found in James 2.18. Now, what can, we, what can we draw from this from, our, from the ending of this this morning? What can we get from this? As children of God, of a living God, we should not, we should not expect to enjoy the blessings of being in the family of God without shouldering all the responsibilities that come along with it. I agree with that, don't you? And secondly, I want you to think about this. May each of us be determined to be a responsible member of the very family of the living church of God. And that's what we have to do. That's what's put on us all as, a, as an order or a commandment from Jesus. We have to share in that responsibility. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for... Uh, bringing people out and letting them be able to hear this podcast this morning. Thank you for the love and the mercies that you share with us and show with us. And thank you for all the things that you do. And Jesus, in your wonderful heavenly name, I pray. Amen. Next week, we will talk about growing as a Christian. You know, it's so important to grow as a Christian. We'll be talking about that next week in our sermon here. But before we go, I want you to get some grape juice out here. 
bending down, I have to reach down and get it. Uh, but it doesn't have to be in that big of a glass. And I want you to get the wafer. Uh, we're going to take communion together here. We hope you have that with you or somebody brought it over to you, maybe from your church where you normally go when you're not sick. But what you want to do is break a piece off, see? All right, Jesus did that. He said, this is my body. Not literally. The Catholics relive that every Sunday morning, but it's not really literal. It's symbolic of his presence being with us. It's a reminder what he did on the cross is really what it represents. This is my body that has been shed for you, or my body that has been broken for you. Take this in remembrance and do this in remembrance of me. So let's do that right now. And with that same measure, he took the vine of life. He said, this is my blood, for that has been shed out on the cross for your sins and for all the sins of all humanity who want to follow and believe in me. It serves as a reminder of my, my, my death, my burial, and my resurrection. And do this in remembrance of me. So let's partake of that right now, as all the disciples did in the room the week before he was put before before he was crucified as for take it right now and uh, of course you know um, grape juice that's what that was not wine but um, like I said that's what we do in the church of Christ because that's what Jesus did and we do it exactly the way it says in the Bible then that's the way you should do it the way Jesus outlined it in scripture and the way it's recorded. And if you do it any other way, then it doesn't really mean anything. And you just have to do it the way it is outlined in God's Word, because that's what we follow in the Church of Christ. All churches of Christ follow this, because that's what we follow is the Bible. Nothing else. Thank you for everything, and love you all. Please help us. Like I said, our, our address to send donations to, offering, 7110 New Hunter Road, Apartment 423, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23111. The phone number to make a debit card trans, uh, trans uh, action to. Don't worry, I won't forget your number. I won't sell your information. I don't do that. That's not Christian anyway. But uh, you can call us up at 804-789-9373 to make a credit card debit uh, transaction. That way you can't go back and erase it or dispute it and remove it. Uh, so we had people do that with a fundraiser. So we now we only do debit transactions so they can't happen. Thank you for everything that you do, and uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for those who are supporting us. And I uh, love you, and please help support the cause, because we cannot build this church without good, embodied people. we got to stop being spoiled. A lot of people out here in the church are spoiled today. They don't want to get up off their butt to do anything, and they want it all to be right there. But you know what? All those churches wouldn't be there if it wasn't for an effort that I'm asking you all to do each of you today. To help us so we can do the same thing that those other churches that you see around. How they got big is because people gave the support. Some people even gave their life to help build it. So, you know, think about that. Is that where you are? Can you help us in that way? You don't have to really give your life. But, you know, they gave their savings. They gave their time. They gave their tax donations. You know, that that's how these things happen. I cannot do this myself. But I can do it with all yours help. So we can have a new church in Mechanicsville that's big. And where people can come, you know, we can meet in a real building, you know. That's the goal. So people, share in the vision. Help us. Because this is what Jesus would want you to do. And this is what how all churches started, even back in Acts, this is how they started. They took up monies. Read the Bible. It's all in there. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. I'm a preacher. This is how it all started. This is how it still starts. But we need to help you. It can't happen without you. So help us. Thank you. I love you. See you next week. Remember, when you go to fight the devil, take two or more with you. Hey, if you want to get baptized, we can baptize you here in the bathtub. Just bring us a change of clothes. We'll baptize you, but I'm not going to baptize you if you haven't come here. You know, I want to make sure you know why you're getting baptized. I don't want you just doing it because I said, hey, I'll baptize you. No, I'm not going to do that. I want to make sure you know why you're getting baptized, what the real reasons are, not just to do it because it's something to do. Okay? So we want to make sure you understand it. You know, confess your sins before the Lord. And, you know, God, you don't got to go to confessional like Catholics. No, you don't have to do that. You just go to God and pray out loud to God in your room, in your bathroom, or wherever you pray, or in the kitchen table, or even going down the road. Don't do it with your eyes closed. Don't do it with your eyes closed. Please don't. But I pray going down the road and, uh, and uh, you know, just confess your sins. And then when you're ready and you feel re led to get baptized because you understand what it means, and, you know, why we get baptized, then I'll go ahead and baptize you. 
Otherwise than that, I don't want to do it if you don't really understand it. Because that's not what it's all about. Because if you're just doing that, you're just going through the motions. And you're not really being blessed by it. Okay? So I'll see you next week. So think about that. I love you. And God bless. It's Michael DeSilvis. Ordained preacher of New Hunter Church of Christ. Located in Mechanicsville, Virginia. 7110 New Hunter Road, Apartment 423. Mechanicsville, Virginia 2311. Our phone number where you can reach us is 804-789-9373. It's 804-789-9373. And also, hey, I'm Michael DeSilvis, evangelist of New Hunter Church of Christ. See you next week.